What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And Ricky Minicamp is underway for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and training camp is just around the corner. And the Jacksonville Jaguars put in a lot of work during the NFL draft and the free agency period to make sure that this team was better than their 1-15 campaign a year ago. And I think it's getting a loss on a lot of you, and a lot of national media as well, that this team right now is a lot better than it was last year. And that is why today we are going to go over position grades before training camp. And we're going to do it after training camp, during the midweek of the season, and after the season as well to kind of see the development of these position grades. And this is the first, so we're going to see if Tree was way off, spot on, or, you know, somewhere right in the middle. You know, way off on some, spot on on some others. We are going to see, ladies and gentlemen. So without further ado, this is the Jacksonville Jaguars 2021 position grades pre-training camp. So let's kick things off on the offensive side of the ball and kind of start off with the most obvious position out on the field, and that is the quarterback position, the position the Jaguars were working to improve and really look for their franchise guy this year, and they did that. Thank you, Frank Gore. Thank you, New York Jets. The Jacksonville Jaguars got their guy in Trevor Lawrence, a generational QB talent, and Jaguar fans were waiting to hear his name get called on draft day. You've seen how excited I was when Trevor Lawrence got his name called, and I'm sure, just like me, you guys were excited as well. This He already could can be considered, I think, the third best quarterback to ever suit up for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and he hasn't even taken a snap for the Jacksonville Jaguars yet. This is a great get for the Jaguars. It's exciting, it's amazing, and I just I just don't see a situation where he doesn't succeed and he doesn't play well for this Jacksonville Jaguar team. And we're going to go over the other positions um, on this Jaguar offense to see if they're going to help him succeed. But as for Trevor Lawrence himself, we're going to be giving him a B plus simply because... Um, you know, he hasn't played it down yet, and you can't really say, oh, A-plus, A-plus already. You know, he's already the greatest quarterback to ever walk the face of the earth. We won't be that, you know, optimistic, that blinded by the sexy pick of Trevor Lawrence just yet. But the Jaguars also have some solid depth now at the quarterback position with Gardner Minshew, who is obviously a fan favorite and, you know, really a cult favorite right now for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And I'll be the first one to admit I'm the biggest Gardner Minshew stand there is especially being a big Washington State fan, but there are actually some people out there that think Gardner Minshew should still have the reins for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and if you are one of those people, you need to kind of dial it back and simmer down a little bit because, you know, he might not even be a guy that's going to be on the team uh, by the start of the season, unfortunately. And they also went out and got C.J. Beathard, who is, for my money, one of the better backup quarterbacks in the NFL. So, this is already a pretty overall decent quarterback room, so that's why it gets a B plus. You know, if this was a Gardner Minshew, Jake Luton, Mike Glennon QB room, we are having a completely different conversation. But you got a Trevor Lawrence, C.J. Beathard, Gardner Minshew QB room. It's already developed, and it's already been, and it's already a better uh, quarterback room from last year. And that's something that you are going to see. I think continuously, um, as we talk about these position groups, not only on the offense, but on the defense as well. Something that Urban Meyer and Trent Bilaki have done a very good job of is adding depth and signing guys back that, you know, were key contributors, key contributors last year. And, you know, that will either contribute as depth pieces or contribute and be a great part of the team. You know what I mean? So last year, you just kind of had a bunch of guys and they didn't really have depth anywhere, and the Jaguars were kind of forced to get a lot of guys like off the streets, pick up a lot of guys that don't have a lot of NFL experience. You know, you've seen that with the kicker position especially. But, you know, now the Jaguars are in a position where they kind of have depth at almost every single position. So that's a really, really nice thing to have in the NFL and a really nice thing to have if you're the Jacksonville Jaguars because not only is that not was that not a common thing last year, that hasn't really been a common thing for the Jaguars um, since they've been a franchise. Now let's talk about the running back position. I'm going to give the running back position an A. I think... For my money, this is the best position group for the Jacksonville Jaguars right now. And, you know, there's still a bunch of people out there, and I call them casuals, that think that Travis Etienne pick wasn't 
a good pick. And he's getting some work done at the wide receiver position. And, you know, now that's because, you know, Trevor Lawrence's shoulder injury, you know, they want to kind of have that rehabbed at 100%. But the fact that he's getting that work done and the Jaguars already kind of want to fit him in as that receiving back kind of role, that's going to develop his game even more. And you're bringing back James Robinson, who is the biggest piece to your offense last year and was a huge surprise and, you know, was number three in rushing yards last year. So he's a top 10 running back in the league. You got a great rushing attack. You pair him with Trevor Lawrence to take some of the pressure off. And you bring in a guy like Carlos Hyde, who is not a excellent running back by any means, but he's a guy that, you know, if James Robinson gets tired, he can kind of fill that power back kind of role and, you know, get those tough yardage. You know, I think that these are three really reliable, stout running backs that the Jaguars have in their running back room. And again, you look at the running backs that Jaguars had last year, and I want you to kind of, again, the people that don't really like the ETN pick, let's let's think about that. You know, they had, what, Ogobwale? Ogobwale was their second best running back last year. I mean, look at the depth that the Jaguars have at this position group that they did not have last year, and tell me that that Travis Etienne pick wasn't awesome because he's going to see some playing time and he's going to see some reps. He's going to see some yards and he has some chemistry with this rookie quarterback that's coming in. He's going to be a big part of your franchise. It was a great draft pick and he makes this position group probably the best position group for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the offensive side of the ball for my money. Now, going over the wide receiver position, I'm going to be giving them a B plus and they're really close to being the best position group Um for the Jacksonville Jaguars, and I've, I've had a lot of high praises um, for these wide receivers. I mean, you look at it on paper, they have a lot of talent. They got DJ Chark, Marvin Jones, Colin Johnson, Philip Dorsett, LaVisca Chenault, Jamal Agnew. I mean, they got Jalen Camp, who's coming out here in rookie minicamp, already signed his contract. I mean, they got a lot of guys out there that are going to make plays and a lot of reliable targets all around the field. They have those guys. But, you know, it, it, there's still kind of that, you know, what if factor if, you know, there really is a true number one guy. It seems like a lot of these guys kind of do the same thing. Similarly, similarly, sim -er I can't even say it. They all kind of do the same thing well. That's what I'm trying to say. They all kind of do the same thing well um, as a unit, right? So the only really true number one wide receiver the Jaguars have that kind of takes the top off is a guy like DJ Chark. When you bring in a guy like Marvin Jones, he kind of reminds me of a guy like DJ Chark. And, you know, you got Colin Johnson, who I hope kind of takes that next step and kind of fills that void of being another, you know, take the top off kind of wide receiver. But the only receiver that kind of doesn't fall into that mold is LaVisca Chenault, because LaVisca Chenault kind of does everything. You know, the run after catch, the slot receiver kind of, you know, is our gadget guy, does kind of everything. So, you know, other than that, you know, I see a lot of guys out there that kind of do a lot of the same thing, um, but they all do it well, you know what I mean? So hopefully there's going to be some some diversity during this season as far as, you know, who who is going to step up and who is going to be, you know, the big playmaker. I think Marvin Jones, just because of his experience, I think he's going to kind of try and rise to the top with DJ Chark. And, you know, I'd like to see Colin Johnson kind of emerge as well. But this is by no means a bad receiving group. I just hope somebody emerges to be, you know, another uh, down the field target for Trevor Lawrence other than DJ Chark. So I'm going to be giving them a B plus. Now we're going to be talking about the offensive line. The offensive line is tricky, right? The offensive line, I thought last year, played really well. I think, you know, most of the sacks that got given up, I mean, you got Mike Glennon back there and Jake Luton, who are like statues, and you had Minshew, who was running for his life back there for no reason. But, I mean, you got Cam Robinson coming in on a franchise tag, Andrew Norwell, Brandon Linder, AJ Can, Jawan Taylor, and you drafted, um, obviously, Walker Little um, in the third round this year. So, you know, this is a group that, you know, can make or break this offense this year. And I'm going to be giving them a C plus because, you know, they've overperformed and they've underperformed in certain years. So, you know, this is, this is a group that you want to play better. So hopefully they do play better and they play up to the standards. But for now, I'm going to be giving them a C plus. Now, as for the tight end position, not much to say here. It's going to get a D. I mean, you're bringing in a guy like Tim Tebow to play that position. I think James O'Shaughnessy kind of has some potential. You know, every time he's out there, 
it, it seemed like him and Minshew kind of had some kind of chemistry out there when he was playing and, you know, he was healthy and he could be an average tight end. I mean, he's that 76 gold tight end that you always get on like your, uh, your Madden ultimate teams. You know, when you do like draft champions, he's always on that team. So, you know, he's average, he's all right, but you know, the tight end position, I think, clearly is the weakest position for the Jacksonville Jaguars on the offensive side of the ball. So, with that being said, they're going to be getting a D. Overall, for the offense, I'm going to be giving them a B-. minus. And like I said, look everywhere on this offense and you will see so much more depth and so much more potential to be better than past Jacksonville Jaguar teams. And that's not going to be the only thing... That's not only going to be exclusive to the offense because it's the same thing on the defense. And like I said, let's talk about the defensive side of the ball. So the Jacksonville Jaguars are finally, finally switching over to a 3-4. And I really like that. And I like that idea. So as of right now, the nose tackle is going to be Malcolm Brown and Roy Robertson, Robertson Harris is going to be the DN and Taven Bryan is going to be the other DN. You know... If Tyson Aluwalu was out there and he didn't backstab us like he did, you know the Jaguars would have a decent amount of depth at the defensive line. I mean, you got guys like Adam Gotsis and uh, Jihad Woods and Devon Hamilton, who I think are, you know, average to decent um, defensive tackles, you know, that could play that position. But, I mean, it's all right. I think that they could have done a better job addressing the defensive line, but, you know, it was kind of, it was defensive line or secondary. And as of right now, what it, what was more talent-driven in the draft and in free agency was the secondary position. So the Jaguars decided to address that position group more. So that's what they did, and they did a good job of doing that. So the defensive line kind of suffered a little bit. So that's going to be getting a C-plus from me, but switching to a 3-4 also really improves your linebackers because their linebackers were already good with Schobert and uh, Miles Jack. You put Josh Allen and you put Clavon Chase on back there as well. This is a excellent, excellent, excellent 3-4 defensive line linebacking core. That's an A for me as far as starters go. This is what you needed to do such a long time ago. I don't know why Todd Wash was so like adamant that they had to they had to be a 4-3 because that right there looks so so good on paper. You got Leon Jacobs as well as a backup. He's been on the team for a long time and man, that that looks good, right? That looks so good on paper those four and you know the the Chase on Josh Allen picks can really um, start to look like they mean something. I mean, Josh Allen, his rookie year, he looked really good with the 11 sacks, but, you know, last year kind of took a step back, didn't, didn't produce as much, so hopefully when he switches back to that kind of natural position, he's going to play better. Schobert, Miles Jack as well, you know, playing their two positions. Miles Jack's already kind of an all-pro kind of player. Joe Schobert's played at that level before, just last year he kind of didn't. He committed to the tank, you know, I think, I think this year is kind of a year you're going to see the best that uh, Joe Schober has to offer. But I think the linebackers are the best position group that the Jaguars have right now. And that was a, a major twist, and it's been a major twist, right? It's it's kind of been a roller coaster since 2017. It's 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 been a strong suit before, but it's also been a really weak suit as well. So it's good to see that. Now the secondary. The secondary has been something that I have been extremely, extremely, extremely impressed by, right? This was a group that was the worst secondary I have ever seen the Jacksonville Jaguars have last year. The absolute worst, right? And now you look at your two starting corners. You know, you got C.J. Henderson, Tyson Campbell, Trey Herndon, and you got you got good corners and then you got Rayshon Jenkins, Rudy Ford, Jared Wilson, Andre Sisco, Daniel Thomas. I mean, you got Shaquille Griffin, too. Sidney Jones. I hate Chris Claybrooks, but you got Chris Claybrooks playing corner. Like, you have so many options now at the secondary position. They did such a good job addressing the secondary, I cannot even tell you. And I think Andre Sisco is going to be a star. 
you know, Rayshon Jenkins and Andre Sisco holding it down. You got Shaquille Griffin, C.J. Henderson, and then you got, you know, Tyson Campbell, Sidney Jones coming off the bench. You even got Trey Herndon and, you know, Clay Brooks, who I don't really like, but, you know, he's there too, but he's only going to be really playing if there's, you know, an injury situation. He might get cut during training camp as well. You really got to admire how well the Jacksonville Jaguars addressed a need in that position, and they went out and they did it. You know, they kept Trey Herndon around because, you know, Trey Herndon last year was our number one corner for most of the season. He's not a guy that is a number one corner. He never was supposed to be. He never should be. But he did it, and he accepted that role. And during some games, you know, he played all right. He played kind of well, you know. And they kept him, and they said, hey, you know, let's ride. Let's do this thing. And he got rewarded. And then he ended up getting, you know, a really, really solid group of guys around him as well. So the secondary for me is going to be getting a B-, and that B- is what I'm going to be giving the overall defensive grade as well, a B-. I think this defense and this offense and this whole Jacksonville Jaguar team is really coming together, and the Jags also next year are going to have the most um, draft, I mean draft capital, the most uh, cap space out of any team next year. So they can even add more pieces to what doesn't work next year. So I'm very, very excited for year two, just like I am for year one. Let's hope year one does bring us some excitement. All right, guys, and that was my 2021 Jaguars position grades pre-training camp. What would you guys think? Let me know in the comment section down below. Don't forget, you can check all the links down below as well. You can like me on Facebook, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter, at Troop Talks. Follow me on Instagram, at Trey Vaughn. Pixley. Also, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Click the bell icon to get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video, and as always, you guys have a great rest of your day.